Church of Winchester. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people, with all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. First reading, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. Out of chaos, God brings order. Out of formless void, God brings light. 
the familiar story was good news in the Israelites who experienced much chaos in their history. It remains good news for us. God created the continues and creates new life. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was, was a formless void and darkness covered in the face of deep. While a wind of God swept over the face of waters, the God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And then God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Word of God, word of life. Psalm 29, ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory of God's name, worship the Lord in beautiful of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders, the Lord is upon the mighty waters, the voice of the Lord is powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks through the cedar trees. The Lord breaks through the cedar trees of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord of the wilderness shakes Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees wither and strips the forest bare. In the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord of the enthroned above the flood, the Lord of the enthroned as Cain for more. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessing of peace. Readings, Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. In Ephesus, Paul encounters people who have received John's baptism and repentance, but have never heard of the Holy Spirit or of baptism in the name of Jesus. After, after Paul baptized them, the Holy Spirit comes upon them and empowers them with gifts of the Spirit. While Apollos in the Corinth, Paul passed through the inter interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard of the there is a Holy Spirit. And then he said, Into what then are you baptized? They entered into John's baptism. Paul saw John baptized baptism with John's baptism of repentance, telling the people to to believe in one who was to come after him. That is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came to upon them, and they spoke to tongues and prophesied all together. There was above twelve of them. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the, fourth cha the first chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Mark's Gospel reports the story of Jesus' baptism with some irony. The one on whom the Spirit descends is himself the one who will baptize others with the Holy Spirit. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem 
we're going out to him and we're baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to share with you a funny story which I've told in the past, but it bears repeating on this Sunday of the baptism of our Lord. There were three rather notorious characters who had been converted and were to be baptized by immersion in a southern church. The whole community turned out for the occasion. The little church had only one small dressing room which opened from the baptistry, the pool in which the men would be immersed at the front of the church. The dressing room was shielded from view by only a sheet hung over the entrance and the floor of that little room was covered with linoleum. On that not-to-be-forgotten night, the first candidate had been baptized and had gone up behind the sheet to change out of his wet baptismal gown. The second man was then baptized and joined the first candidate behind the sheet. The second man was having difficulty wriggling out of his wet trousers. He extricated one leg and gave a kick to free the other leg. Unfortunately, his foot skidded on the wet linoleum floor and he slid back down into the pool of baptismal water on top of the preacher and the third candidate being baptized. Well, as he went, he desperately grabbed the sheet shielding the dressing area and carried it with him into the pool. Meanwhile, the first man had removed all of his wet clothing when the sheet disappeared into the water. And it left him standing before the congregation in his birthday suit. He grabbed a chair and tried to hide behind it. Now, the lights had been turned low for the baptizing, and somebody yelled, turn out the lights. But a panicking deacon did exactly the opposite, and he turned them on, full power. I did not make this story up. Well, John the Baptist, had one very memorable baptism. The baptism of Jesus. John the Baptist was a colorful individual and was well known for his preaching. He often called Pharisees and Sadducees, who were his audience, you brood of vipers. He certainly was not diplomatic with his preaching. It takes guts to call members of your congregation vipers, and yet John had an enormous impact on his community. Crowds from Jerusalem and all of Judea went out in the wilderness to hear him preach. One reason John had such an impact on people may have been his humility. He was not on an ego trip. He was genuine. He was real. And he wasn't interested in advancing his own agenda. In fact, Mark tells us that his message wasn't about himself at all, but about the coming Messiah. 
John wasn't looking for people to follow him. He was looking for people to follow Jesus. John was a man of conviction and humility. Could this be the reason Jesus came to John to be baptized? John baptized the Son of God. And even though this had to be the crowning event in his life, his humility shines through. John tries to turn Jesus away saying, I need to be baptized by you. And yet, you come to me. But Jesus needed to be baptized. Not because of his sin, but to be an example for us. Baptism is a powerful symbol for Christians. More powerful than many church people are aware. Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann taught about the importance of baptism. Each of us, said Brueggemann, have learned life lessons and we live our lives both consciously and unconsciously guided by these lessons. These lessons are a product of a lifetime of influences that come from our family, from our friends, and from the culture that we live in. My responsibility as a pastor is to point out that because of some of these lessons we learned, we may have missed God's purpose for our lives. This suggests that you and I may be living our lives according to the wrong lessons. But to tell you the truth, I'd probably be better off if I was just reinforcing your present way of thinking. Look what happened to Jesus when he tried to change the way people were living. They crucified him. I pray that I do not give in to the temptation to take the safe, easy way or give up on trying to persuade you to look for people to follow Jesus. We live by the lessons we have learned. These lessons are the product of a lifetime of influences. It is the role of the church and its ministry to disengage us from the lessons that do not work. And the way to disengage from these lessons is through our baptism. Baptism is a sign and seal that we desire new lessons in our lives, lessons written by Christ himself. In baptism, we claim a new set of values. The purpose of baptism is to set us free from lessons that have failed us. And this new way offers us new possibilities. We all need to ask the question whether our baptism means anything in our lives. It should be a powerful force in making choices both big and small. It should be a powerful force in reminding us who we are and to whom we belong. When Martin Luther was despairing and seemed to be overwhelmed with the challenges that he faced, it is said that he would use his finger to write Latin in the dust on a table. Baptizatus sum. I have been baptized. This is a radical understanding of what it means to be baptized. And that's the point. Baptism should separate us from our old life. It should separate us from the corruption of our society. Can we get our minds around this understanding of baptism? It can be life-changing. The gospel gives us lessons to live by. Baptism is a sign that we have adopted a new way of living for our lives. 
Baptism tells us who we are and that we belong to Christ forever. We are baptized. Amen. to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders that, guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beast, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation, and faithful stewards care for all God has made, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people, to use their strength wisely, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, that God shower compassion, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the congregation that gathers in their homes together, for students returning to school, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace, 
Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent. For the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the magi by a star, bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to, to God.
Oh,